you say um, families should know most about dealing with someone in their family oh. or a loved one oh, yeah. that is an addict? Right. And so, <laughs> so I always say that um, my husband and I, we're high school sweethearts. We just, we've been together almost 50 years and our son's been ill for over 20 years. So we've been at this a long time. I say that he and I live about a hundred feet up off the ground on a very thin wire. We've been there for 20 years. Um, sometimes we fall off. We get tired. Sometimes we try to do the right thing by him to love him and be uh, abiding parents who are not judgmental. But what I tell my families is sometimes we fall off on the side of tough love and sometimes we fall off on the other side of enabling. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I have a miraculous answer about that. It, it's uh, the one thing I, I know I love about my organization, A New Path, is we've always argued that our premise is that we should try to keep our children alive for the cure. Now that's kind of grand talk, but it's borrowed from AIDS, where they tried to keep the AIDS patients alive for the cure. Is there a cure? Well, actually with AIDS, we're getting closer to it. Is there a cure for addictive illness? No, but we do want to keep our children alive. So I, I do think that's, um, but the other thing I'll say is I wrote an article last year called Do Not Hate the Tiger. And uh, this is what I say to people. If I'm sitting in my office and, uh, and a tiger comes into my office, a wild tiger, not a, not a domesticated tiger, I'm going to jump up and hit it with a table and try to jump off my balcony. I'm going to get away from it. But I don't hate that tiger. Even if it tries to kill me, I don't hate it. And I have no contempt for it. I appreciate it that it's strategic. It's doing what a tiger does. In a way, I try to teach my families they need to have their, their child at times might be a tiger or their brother, a tiger. But we shouldn't hate them or have contempt. They, their brain is giving them cues to be strategic. So they lie or they steal or they, they do all kinds of crazy ass stuff. But that doesn't mean that they're evil. The tiger's not evil, but it might fully try to kill me if it came in my office. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I think we need to promote understanding. However, I also tell my clients, so the family members, I don't want to live with a tiger. I don't want to live in the, under the same roof. So actually, when our son is actively using, as he, as he some has been much of the time over the years, it's we have tried to live with him, and he's it's very difficult. So um, that I can't advise people what to do because um, you know it's very painful for a mother to abandon their child. But so my son's currently homeless. I love him, but I can't live with him. He's he's not he's like a tiger right now. Will he become himself again? I hope so. Um, can I help him? Yes, we help him with food. We're, my husband's off at the Big Five buying him a tent tonight. Does does that sound like a mean spirit? He lived with us and was very menacing. Stole everything we owned. It was not an easy. You know, even as he stole from us, we still loved him, but we can't live with him. And so that's one thing I'd advise people. Also, um, get support from other families. I Like here in San Diego, I run um, with NAMI, the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill. I run a support group for parents who have children with addictive illness and psychiatric illness. And so we, you know, we rally, we do fun things, we... You know, and sometimes we have to compartmentalize, live side by side with the, the grief and not let the illness destroy us because it could it could totally destroy us. You know, we've been at this 20 years and it's almost amazing. We're still going well, but we're OK. I, I really like what you said, because it, it sounds like you're recommending that you, you have to be aware of where things are and, and balance. And so there's not one way to do it. You have to be be mindfully aware of, of 
of where things are with the safety issues that are, are, are at play currently in the moment and whether, you know, your loved one is in the tiger state or if they're more themselves and kind of managing that way. And I think that that's a really important thing for families to hear because, um, you know, I myself, my family has struggled with addiction my whole life for, with different family members. And there's always, when, when someone's in the tiger space, there's a lot of struggle, feelings of guilt and feeling like you're letting someone down, feeling like you can't, like you're not doing enough. But at the same time, there also does have to be protecting yourself and right. your safety and the safety right. of your home. And so it, it's a difficult dance. And I really just like that that idea that it's you don't it, it's a relationship. And so you don't have to be one way. You have to be mindful of of all of you know of what space you're at and and work from there. And I really right. like that. Yeah, without without judgment, but still with compassion right. and love, and that right. you can love that person though you're setting boundaries and not allowing them to live with you. Right. You know, you can still be connected and still have that relationship in some way. I I actually just wrote a, a, new, a new article about my son living on the street. And the other thing I think I failed to understand all these years is that he has a community on the street. He, he has a sense of what Martin Buber calls communitas, a, a real sense of shared suffering and oneness. So he's not as miserable as we would think, because on the street, he's fully accepted. People aren't judging him or scolding him or telling him he's a bad person. So ironically, it hasn't been as horrific as one might think. I mean, I'm not, I'm not being a Pollyanna. I don't want him being on the street. But it, we, I think sometimes we stereotype people, and I don't think they, that people understand how... Um, there can there can be positives even for something that looks terrible like living on the street. 